All right, Mr. Strelberg, are you ready to proceed? We're ready, Judge. Thank you. And Mr. Lewis, are you ready to proceed? Yes, Judge. Okay, Ms. Latosi, you can proceed on behalf of the state. Thank you, Your Honor. We are here on the state of Georgia versus Cancelo, Amer Antoine, and Mandy Lanique Hall. For Mr. Antoine, we are here on warrant numbers 20W14479, possession of firearm or knife during commission of or attempt to commit certain felonies. Warrant number 20W14480, theft by receiving stolen property. And 20W14481, purchase, possession, manufacture, distribution, or sale of marijuana. And for Mr. Hall, we are here on warrant numbers 20W14476, possession of firearm or knife during commission of or attempt to commit certain felonies. Warrant number 20W14477, theft by receiving stolen property. And warrant number 20W14478, purchase, possession, manufacture, distribution, or sale of marijuana. Mr. Hall also has five different traffic-related citations, but we won't be dealing with those. Okay. And Officer Kruger, can you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. You can put your hand down. Please state your name. First name is Jeffrey, last name is Kruger. Where are you currently employed? City of Lawrenceville Police Department. Are you a post-certified officer? Yes, ma'am. And can you tell the court about your involvement with Mr. Antoine and Mr. Hall? Okay. The incident took place on October 16th at approximately 13.08 hours. I was located on Paper Mill in East Krogan. During this time, I was behind Mr. Denty and Keon Sello. They were driving a 1997 F-150. I noticed when they approached the light, neither brake lights were working. Once the light turned green, the driver, Mr. Denty, made a left-hand turn. During this time, he did not engage his left turn signal. While he was in the process of turning left, he changed lanes to the far right lane, almost causing an accident, once again, without using his turn signal. Before I had the opportunity to engage my emergency equipment, there was a driver, Mr. Denty, made an abrupt right turn into 108 East Krogan Street. This address is Valero Gas Station. Once Mr. Denty came to a stop, he rolled down his window, and during that time, I noticed a smoke-like substance flowing out of the cab of the vehicle. I immediately noticed a strong odor of marijuana. I made contact with Mr. Denty, and I noticed his eyes were bloodshot, and this is common with the use of marijuana. I advised Mr. Denty that there's a lot of things wrong with the vehicle due to the reason for the stop, and Mr. Denty stated, yeah, I know. Mr. Denty immediately became fixated on his cell phone during our conversation. I asked Mr. Denty if the things wrong with the vehicle were the least of his problems, and he stated, yes, sir. I then asked him how much marijuana is located inside the vehicle. Mr. Denty made the comment, we were just smoking a blunt. Without hesitation, he made the comment, no, but no, actually, as if he was trying to retract his statement, and then he became fixated with his phone once again, and he just said, I have one gram. During that time, I requested another officer to the scene. I advised Mr. Denty that his actions while driving were unsafe, and I then asked him for his driver's license. He stated he didn't have it with him. I asked him if he had a valid license, and he stated he had a valid permit. Once the second officer arrived at the scene, I asked Mr. Denty to exit the vehicle, or no, excuse me, prior to that, I asked Mr. Denty where the marijuana was located inside the vehicle, and he stated in his pocket. Once the second officer arrived to the scene, I then asked Mr. Denty, excuse me, correction one more time, I asked him if there was anything else inside the vehicle to include weapons, and he stated no. Then I asked him to step out of the vehicle, conduct a search of his purse, and I removed two individually packaged plastic vials of suspected marijuana. 
uh, Mr. Denty was then taken to the back of the vehicle where he stood by with the second officer. I proceeded up to uh, Mr. Keon Sello, uh, conducted a pat down of his person, uh, escorted him to the back of the vehicle. Um, while I was conducting a pat down, I felt a large object in his pocket. Um, didn't feel like a weapon or anything, so I let it, uh, left, uh, left it alone. Um, officer Hutchins, who was on scene, began to ask Mr. Keoncello about the object. Um, he tried to reach in his pocket. I asked him if, if I could get it for him. He gave me verbal consent to go into his pocket and pull the item out. During that time, there was a large uh, amount of currency. Um, I handed it back to him, and they stood back there with Officer Hutchins while I went to go search the vehicle. Uh, upon searching the vehicle, as I reached the back of the vehicle, both Mr. Keoncello and Mr. Denty uh, began to watch me. Um, as I was searching the back seat, I removed uh, a Glock 23 40 caliber pistol with a bullet located in the chamber. Um, during that time, I walked back to Mr. Keoncello and Mr. Denty and placed both of them in handcuffs. They were then escorted to the back of the patrol cars where they were just going to wait while being detained. I went back up to the vehicle, and I located uh, other uh, firearm related objects to include extended magazines um, for the Glock pistol, an AR 15 magazine, and a uh, Smith & Wesson revolver. Uh, both pistols were ran through GCIC. The uh, Smith & Wesson revolver returned uh, back as stolen. Um, all the items inside the vehicle that I mentioned were collected and secured in the back of my vehicle. Uh, approached Mr. Keoncello and removed the large amount of currency from his pocket. He had a total of $437 of a real American currency and he had a total of $600 of fake currency with them. Um, I read of Mr. Keoncello his Miranda rights and he refused to speak to me. I closed the door and proceeded to Mr. Denty. Once again, read him Miranda. He refused to speak to me, he refused to speak to me. I read him implied consent. He refused to state chemical tests for blood. Um, they were then transported to the Gwinnett County Jail. And yeah, while en route to the jail, um, based on the and circumstances with the stolen uh, firearm that was uh, reported out of Flowery Branch. A Flowery Branch investigator wanted me to obtain pictures of both subjects due to being uh, suspects in multiple uh, felony crimes in their jurisdiction. As for the, the Glock, where specifically was it located in the back seat? The back seat? Uh, so the truck's like an older style F-150, and it kind of has like a table uh, style back seat, and it was underneath it. Was it on the driver's side, passenger side, kind of in the middle? Where was it at? <sighs> kind of in the middle, uh, favoring more towards the driver's side. There was no door on, on there's no passenger door on the driver's side. So I, I would say more closer to the driver because I was searching the vehicle from the passenger side of the vehicle. Was the only marijuana the marijuana? Oh, Antoine, I see you. We'll, we'll get to you in just a minute, okay? Go ahead, Ms. McCarthy. Thank you, Eric. Um, so as far as the marijuana, was there only marijuana located on, I believe it was Mr. Hall you testified to? Uh, the marijuana that was collected was on Mr. Denty. Oh. There, there was miscellaneous uh, smoked marijuana, like residue of blunts and stuff located inside the vehicle that we tossed. Um, what you located on him was it ever was it weighed or did you weigh it or someone at the police department weigh it uh, i do not recall um i was not the one that packaged it i do know that it was sent to the gbi though as far as you know would it be enough to to be a felony weight or was it a misdemeanor weight type marijuana? Are you referring to just the marijuana on its own? Yes. Okay, if it's just marijuana by its own, it would be a misdemeanor amount.
Is all this occur in Gwinnett County? Yes, ma'am. It's at City of Lawrenceville. And do you see Cancelo Antoine here on the video today? Um, Mr. Denty, uh, looks like he's on video number three. Subject in the green jumpsuit, and Mr. Cancelo looks like he's on camera, Joe Force number two. And he has the curly twist hair. Okay, that's all I have. Okay, you can start your cross examination. All right, thank you, Judge. Uh, officer, Mr. Mr. Kruger, is this stop recorded? Yes, sir. All right, so it's recorded on police car video? As, as long as the cameras were working working correctly, yes, sir, it was. So your car does have police video? Yes, sir. And was it on body camera as well? Yes, sir, it was. Who was the second officer who showed up? Officer Hutchins. Were any others involved? Uh, there were a few other, uh, when I say a few, there's qu quite a few, I, I wouldn't be able to recall all of them. To your knowledge, do all officers there have body cameras on? Yes, sir. Uh, the driver was uh, Mr. Dente, correct? Uh-oh. Officer Kruger, you're uh, muted. Somehow it went. It got muted. Mr. Strawberry, you maybe need to ask your question again. Is he back? Yes, I think so. <laughs> Officer, so you did get statements from Dente, is that correct? At, at, while on the traffic stop or once you Yeah, I said that at the outset and he admitted to having a gram of marijuana on him? Yes, sir, at the time of the traffic stop. And that was all the marijuana that was found? No, sir. No. Was others found on him or anywhere else? In the car, it was an estimate. It was an estimated two grams, and both of them were individually packaged in plastic but it, vials. But it was all on Dente. Yes, sir. Is currency taken into uh, evidence? Did you ask? Was it? Yes, was it taken into evidence? Yes, sir. So, were both guns found in the back seat of the car? Yes, sir. And both were under the table? They were under the seat. Both were in the same place? Uh, approximately. They're, they're next to each other in the same general area. That with the magazines and everything else that I found. And you're the one that did the search of the car? Yes, sir. Uh, no further questions, thank you. Mr. Lewis? Thank you, Judge. One second. One second. Uh, Officer Kruger, good morning. Um, and let me morning. start here. If, if I understand you correctly, um, you stopped the car about 1.10 in the afternoon. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and, and did you stop the car? I was listening, but I wasn't quite sure. Did you stop the car because of the, of the vehicle violations? because of the traffic violations there's going to be the vehicle violation that's what the uh, traffic violations occurred before i was able to engage the stop okay and, and if i understand you correct there's no door on the passenger side on the driver's side it's an it's an older model older model truck there's only three doors to it and the i mean it has a driver door it has a front passenger door and it has a half door behind the passenger seat well, one of the 
one of the doors that's normally opened or closed is missing. Is that right? Uh, no, sir. There was no door. There's only three doors. It's like a, a two and a half doors. Okay, I thought truck. I heard that there was no door on the passenger side. I thought that that was your testimony. No, no, no mistake. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. At some point prior to the stop, you saw some type of smoke come out the car. Just off. Can, can, can you, you ask that one more? I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out. You, you indicated, I think, you testified that at some point in time prior to the stop, you saw some type of smoke come out the car, like somebody was smoking. No, sir. I did not testify to that. That is incorrect. Okay. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to follow. So you you stopped you stopped the vehicle because of because of um, vehicle violations. Can you tell me what the vehicle violations were? Uh, the left and right brake lights were not working when the vehicle was coming to a stop. Left and right brake lights, okay. And as the car turns, yes, you indicated that that the, that the, that the turn put some other uh, drivers in jeopardy. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Now, the traffic violation that you described, is that caught on dash cam? As long as my car camera was working, yes, it would be. Okay, you haven't looked at it and confirmed that that was captured. Is that fair to say? You understand my question? So, sir, I, I apologize. I'm going to out. No, sir, I do okay, not. Okay, that's, that's fine. And that's fine. We'll work with the audio. It's fine. Did, my, my, yes, question was, my question was, did you have a chance to look at the, the dash cam after the arrest, between the arrest and now, to see if the traffic violation was caught on dash cam. No, sir, I have not looked at my dash cam video. And that's fine. Body cam. The conversation with my client. Were you able to see if the body cam was operating at the time that you had the conversation with my client? Yes, sir. It was working. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Uh, my client was uh, 18 at the time. Is that right? Did he tell you his age? Um, I have to go back to my report. I don't recall off the top of my head. That's fine. Didn't did, did tell you how long he had been driving. I don't recall that information, no, sir. Okay. If I understand the testimony, you found two two guns under the, under the back seat. Is that right? Yes, sir. Do you recall who the owner of the vehicle was? Uh, I, do, I do not. No, sir. Okay. Did, did my client claim to own the vehicle? Do you recall that? Uh, no, sir, I do not. Okay, that's fine. The vehicle itself, um, from your vantage point, the guns were not in plain view. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir, that is fair to say. Okay, the total weight of the marijuana, you, I think you described it as two grams, is that right? The video is crazy. Right, that's why I want to make sure the officer understood. Officer, the, 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 the total weight of the marijuana was found on my client, Mr. Hall. Is that right? His video is... I apologize. The first half of that conversation not completely. That, that's why, that's why, listen, I, I'll, repeat it as, I'll repeat it as many times as we, as we need. It's fine. If you, you didn't design yes, the system, officer. You didn't purchase the system. You just work it with the system that we're given. It's fine. Uh, but my question yes, was, all of the marijuana that was confiscated from the arrest, that marijuana was on my client, Mr. Hall. Is that right? That's correct. Total, total weight was about two grams. Is that what you indicated? Estimated. I did not wait. Did, did you see? That's fine. Did you see any smoking implements? Did he tell you that he's a smoker? Can you ask that question one more time? My, my question is, did my client, Mr. Hall, indicate to you that he smokes marijuana, that the marijuana he had was for personal use? No, he never said that. Did you see any smoking? Did you see any smoking implements in the car? Smoking implements? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I don't know whether I don't know grinder or or a bomb or whatever. Uh, I'm not a like old person. old 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 roaches. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, and, and the money
money that we're talking about, the, the, the $437 of, of, of real U.S. currency and the $600 of fake currency, that's found on Mr. Hall or the co-defendant? Co-defendant. The co-defendant, okay. Did my client have a cell phone? Do you recall that? I uh, recall that they both did, and I collected both of them. Okay, do you, do you recall if any of the cell phones were ringing, if anybody was texting about purchasing any sort of marijuana? No, sir, I was not looking at the phone. I didn't have a search Okay, do you, that's fine. Do you recall if there was any scale located in the vehicle? No, sir. Did, I, did you ask either one of the, of the only two people in the vehicle, is that right? Yes, sir. Did you ask either one of them about the guns that were found under the back seat? Both, both individuals were read Miranda and refused to speak. Okay, so nobody told you anything about the guns that were under the back seat, is that right? That is correct. Okay. My client, my client uh, had a valid license, is that right? No, sir, it was expired. He was charged okay. with driving while unlicensed. Okay, I got that. I'm sorry. Driving without a valid license. He was also charged with failure to signal. Is that right? I'd have to. Yes, sir. 46 123. Okay, and, and you also have him charged with DUI. Is that right? Yes, sir. At some point in time, did you, did you have him do field sobriety? Yes, sir. Y yes or no? No, sir. Okay. Did he submit to any sort of um, um, blood, uh, breath, or urine test? Implied consent was read and refused. Hmm. Okay. All right. No further questions, Judge. All right. Ms. Mazzotti, follow up? Just briefly, Your Honor. In regards to the gun that was stolen, um, it looks like that gun had been stolen out of Flowery Branch PD approximately two weeks before you stopped Mr. Hall and Mr. Antoine. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you know from your conversations with the investigator from Flowery Branch whether that gun was stolen in one of the cases that the defendants are suspects in? Yes, sir. I mean, yes, ma'am. That's correct. They are, they are suspects in when that gun was stolen yes ma'am both of them um the the, the glock I'm, I, I do not know but i do know from speaking with the flowery branch investigator that the smith and western road uh, vulture was stolen out of the vehicle and that their suspects were entering autos okay so i'm, I'm sorry i wasn't clear was that both defendants are suspects when that gun was stolen yes ma'am okay thank you that's all i have your honor any follow-up uh, to that, Mr. Stoberg? Who is the officer you were talking to in Flower Branch? I'm going to butcher his last name. It's Investigator Sarino. S A R R I N O. All right. Mr. Lewis, do you have any follow-up questions? Officer, I understand that I have a few questions. I understand that you are not conducting the investigation. This, this, this theft, uh, is it a burglary or entering auto? Tell me about um, where, where the guns were taken. What you know? Uh, that, that information is very limited. All I know is that they're suspecting autos. And okay. the, Smith and Western, okay. the Smith & Wesson revolver was one of the victims that they're suspects in. Where the okay. Smith & Wesson revolver belonged to the victim. Besides okay, so that, that is all I know. Okay, so you don't know if it's an entering auto or burglary? I recall correctly, it's entering autos for Flowery Branch. In, in, entering auto and Flowery Branch. And, Flower, and, and when you say Flowery Branch, I, I think it, that's Hall County, is that right? Uh, Flowery Branch should be in Hall County, the police department. Okay, Hall, Hall County, that, that's fine, that's fine. You're communicating with an officer in Hall County about a potential entry auto. And if I heard you right, the entry auto was about two weeks prior to your stop, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, and were both of the guns taken in that entry auto? Any
incident? I don't know anything about the black pistol, which is the Glock. All I all I can speak for is the Smith and Wesson revolver. Okay, so one of the guns were taken were take was taken during that that interim auto. Do you know if there were any other guns taken during the interim auto? No, sir. You'd have to contact Lowry Branch or Hall County. I'm, I'm just asking in terms of what you know. Was there anything else located in the car that you stopped uh, on October 16th that indicated that that it was taken from that interim auto? Other than the pistol? I do not know. Okay. That's so there's a lot. There's a there's a few pairs of shoes in there. Um, I didn't think anything of it at the time. Um, that'd be the only thing that I could say that could possibly come from an entering auto. Some nice sneakers. Besides okay. that, that's that's it. Your Honor, I would object to speculation on that of what he might think on without anything further. I think he actually phrased it as he was guessing. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's fine, Judge. I'm, 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 on, I'm on, obviously, the court understands my question. My question was, obviously, there's a gun. Is there anything else linked uh, uh, from that interim auto? I don't even know if it's an interim auto. Maybe a burglary or broken and shed. That's not, that's not what's super important. What's super important is that they find anything related to this alleged theft. Um, and that's all the questions that I have. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Any additional follow-up questions? No, Your Honor. Mr. Strawberry? Uh, no, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Any additional evidence from the state? No, Your Honor. Okay. Um, argument, Mr. Strawberry? Uh, uh, yeah, we'll start with you, Mr. Strawberry. All right. Thank you, Judge. I, I guess I'm at a point where I don't understand the case against my client. Uh, intent to distribute, he's charged with intent to distribute marijuana. This car was stopped. There's smoke coming out of the car. There's a small bit of marijuana, suspected marijuana, that is found not on my client, but on the driver of Emory, the car. Emory, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm going to end up asking that that count be bound over as a misdemeanor. And then the okay. gun that would relate to that, the possession during commission of the felony, be dismissed. So I, I think the only thing is probably going to end up being a set by receiving in the misdemeanor marijuana if the judge says that. Okay. So with that said, Judge, I'll just uh, now I understand where the uh, state is a little bit better, and I will just address the theft by receiving. But it's still on the marijuana, misdemeanor marijuana is on him, I guess. He could be linked in through the smoke through the car that would be the state's argument as to the gun is this officer doesn't know who the car belongs to uh, the driver there is a presumption that items in the car belong to the driver or the owner of the car uh, this was underneath the table in the back of the car um, so the only thing that potentially links is some investigation out of flowery branch where all we know is that he's a suspect and that is that's big time speculation and the, the link there is very tenuous so one uh there's a presumption that it belongs to somebody else in the car uh, number two um even if you get past that uh, is it with arm within the arm's reach and the link to this defendant is very tenuous out of some uh, unknown investigation out of Flowery Branch. We move to dismiss that charge. Um, also, the um, what is the evidence that he knew or should have known that the gun was stolen, even if he did possess it, which he did not? Well, what I'm going to do for um, yours, Mr. Um, Stroberg, is um, I mean, I don't think you can get any more actual possession than being in someone else's pocket. Um, so uh, I'm dismissing the marijuana charge and the corresponding possession firearm during commission crime. The the stolen guns in the back seat, um, you know, I guess the state's gone on theory at this point of constructive possession. Um, the newer should have known, um, you know, again, that's, that's going to be an issue. Um, that'll have to be decided ultimately by a jury. So I'll bond over the misdemeanor. It is charged as a misdemeanor theft by receiving. Yes. You're binding over one misdemeanor? Yes, sir. The theft by receiving, um, dismissing the uh, other two warrants. Mr. Lewis? Yes, yeah, I, 
If I may, I was actually going to ask that that theft by receiving actually be bound over as a felony. The theft of a firearm is actually a felony. Irrespective of the amount. Yeah, I wonder, they were both charged as misdemeanors, and I thought maybe I missed the code update. Um, Firearms automatically, Judge. That's what I thought, but I, maybe they changed the law. Let's see here, the both warrants with misdemeanors. I did look at that earlier. Let's see here. So it has to be bound over as a felony. Hmm. Okay. And then our point would still remain, how does this defendant know or should have known about the gun? And there's no presumption that he knew about it. I, it's not even his car and it's underneath the table in the back. Underneath the seat? What table? No, it's under, there's a table under the back, the way it was explained. It's underneath it and it's closer to the driver's side. So everything, everything seems to point away from this defendant. In, in your honor, I didn't address that, but your Honor, that gun was stolen out of Flowery Branch approximately two weeks before it was found, and this defendant is one of the sus suspects in that theft. There may be an issue when it comes to beyond a reasonable doubt, but I believe that that is enough for probable cause purposes, Your Honor. Okay. Let me hear from Mr. Lewis. Uh, thank you, Judge. Judge, um, ultimately, we're going to address three charges. One, the gun is not in plain view, and the officer testified that he doesn't know who the owner of the vehicle is. Um, that was one of the questions that I asked. Uh, obviously, if it's my client's vehicle, then, you know, you could say he has constructive knowledge of everything that's in the vehicle. But we don't know whose vehicle it is. Um, we know the vehicle's not stolen, um, but but there's there's been no answer by my client that he's had the vehicle for a week or two weeks or five minutes. Um, so so the gun's not being in plain view and there being absolutely no testimony about who the owner of the vehicle is, um, uh, I would argue that that gun charge ultimately has to go away. It's just, you know, they're sitting in the gun and their proximity is not enough. If this is mother's car, if this is sister's car, we can talk about him having um, continuous maybe uh, access to the car, whether he's driving or not. But there's no there's no testimony about the owner of the vehicle. There's no testimony about the gun being in plain view. And I think the gun charge ultimately has to be dismissed. Yeah, respectfully, and I don't know if you had the power to even address the DUI. I would argue that the DUI has to be dismissed. The officers indicated that there's no field sobriety and that there's no blood uh, uh, or urine. He's charged with DUI um, less safe. So, and, and, and I'm assuming that the issue is marijuana, not alcohol. There's been absolutely no testimony about anybody having any alcohol in their breath, smelling of alcohol, or the alcohol in their vehicle. Uh, and so I would argue that the DUI needs to be dismissed because uh, there's no blood or urine, and ultimately there's no field sobriety. Mr. Your Honor, my understanding of the testimony is that the marijuana is actually a misdemeanor weight. So the state's asking that that warrant be bound over as a misdemeanor, um, which then dismisses the possession of firearm charge. My argument is the same regarding the theft by receiving with the addition that it is a vehicle that he... Uh-uh. Your video froze. You, I heard you say the argument about the uh, theft by receiving is the same. With the addition that it was a vehicle that the defendant was in possession of, he was the driver, and it sounds to me like that gun would have been within his arm's reach. As to the citations, we don't address those in magistrate court, so and that's the DUI. But even as to regards to the DUI, the defendant admitted that he had been smoking um, and he was the driver of the vehicle he had been driving, so I believe that would be sufficient for that particular charge anyway. Okay, so based on uh, what Mr. Lewis argued in uh, the state's argument, um, the, the VGCSA uh, possession with intent, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to be bound over as a misdemeanor uh, VGCSA, so therefore the possession of firearm during commission of a felony is dismissed. Um, and then for Mr. Hall, as he was the operator of the vehicle, um, there's a, a, a stronger presumption of constructive possession, especially contents inside the vehicle. 
um, within the passenger compartment. So I'm going to bind that over as a felony. It should have been charged as a felony um, theft by receiving. And then going back to Mr. Antoine, um, considering it all together, I'm going to dismiss that theft by receiving. Thank you, Judge. Now, does he do, do we need to address anything? Well, he's got a bunch of pending. He's got some stuff surrendered off bond as well, doesn't he? Yes, Judge. He's got some other stuff going on, but we would respectfully like to be a, a, address the issue of bond. I don't know if Mr. Stroberg wants to go first, just to keep well, Mr. the. Mr. Stroberg's client's done. Oh, he's all done. Okay, yeah. all right. Or I saw him raise his hand. Judge, I'm going to respectfully ask uh, for a bond in the amount of uh, twenty-five hundred dollars for my client. Ultimately, the court is bound over BGCSA as a misdemeanor. Um, um, and the firearm as a felony. Um, obviously, the, the court has heard the evidence. Um, what I disagree with uh, the, 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 bind, the binding over is, ir is irrelevant right now. The only thing that matters is based on the evidence that you have, my client's been bound over for a felony firearm and misdemeanor amount of, uh, of marijuana, personal use of marijuana. Um, obviously, we've heard some evidence about something going on in Hall County. We don't know the details. It may be a theft. Um, yeah, uh, it may be. It may be a felony. It, it may be a um, uh, entering auto. It may be a burglary. The officer didn't have a whole lot of information about it. Um, uh, and of course, my client may may not be a suspect. So I would argue that that's sort of, uh, in a lot of respects, irrelevant right now. Uh, I think what what. Uh, Obviously, the prosecutor is going to read my client's record, but I think uh, my client being 18, 19, 19 years old now, he turned 19 in jail at the time of the stop, he was 18 years old. I would ask that the bond consider, that the court consider setting bond and not above. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. 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 Fleeing or attempting to elude a police officer, reckless driving, affixing a plate to conceal or misrepresent identity, and obstruction of an officer. You know, I understand he's young, but even at this, he's now, I believe, 19, and at 19, he's now on his second felony arrest. He has a pending case, so he has new charges while he's out on bond. Um, based upon all that, we object. I believe he's a risk of committing additional felonies pending trial. Do you have a, a, any information on the, the case that he was out on bond on? When was when was that arrest? It appears it was an old it's an older case. It's a 2019 case. It looks like the offense date is January 30th of 2019. He does have another arrest from May of 2019, but ultimately all of that was dismissed. That's correct, Judge. January 30th, 2019. I have the discovery on that case. Okay. And that's all that I'm aware of, Your Honor. So he was out. He was out. Um, he was out on bond, Judge, respectfully for um, 20 months, 19 months. So he's not the guy getting in trouble every few every few weeks. And I'm sorry, does, does he live here in Gwinnett or where does he live? Judge, I'm going to swear him in, Judge, respectfully, uh, and let him uh, present some things to the court. Raise your right hand, Mr. Hall. You swear from testimony provided this morning in case the state of Georgia versus at the end of Hall be the truth, the whole truth, and up with the truth, Mr. Hall. Okay, you can put your hand down. You're going to need to speak up. You're going to need to speak. You don't need to take the mask off. You need to speak up. You understand that? Okay, good. Did you hear the judge's question? Exactly. Okay. The judge asked, do you live here in Gwinnett County? How long have you been living in Gwinnett County? Okay. Were you born in Gwinnett County? Okay. When were you born? Okay. When did you move down? In Pennsylvania, Judge. When did you move down to Georgia? How old were you? Okay. And, and, and you've been living in Georgia ever since? When did you attend high school? 
Did you graduate from high school? What year did you leave high school? Okay. I can barely hear her. 11th grade, 11th grade. She can barely hear you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Judge. She can barely hear you. So she says no to your bond is because she can't hear you. You understand that? Okay, so you can keep whispering. I'm okay with that. Or you can speak up. You understand that? Okay, good. Uh, you left high school, 11th grade, Central Gwinnett, is that right? Mm -hmm. All right, have you been working in, in 2020? Working where? Mm -hmm. Will you be able to return to that job? Yeah. Okay, and how long prior to your arrest, October 16, 2020, were you working with temp agency? Mm -hmm. Three to four months. Three to four months. Do you have any children? Yes, I have one. How old is your child? Three months now. All right. And the boy or girl? A girl. And the mother of the child? Does she live with you or does she live with her parents? She lives with her parents. Okay. And where were you living October 16, 2020? Will you be able to return to that address? Yes. What's that address in Gwinnett? Who else lives there? My grandmother. Okay. And so is it, is it your grandmother, your mother, and you living there? It's my brother. Or how old is he? When you were working prior to your arrest on October 16, 2020, were you working full time? Part time. Part time. Okay. All right. Do you have anything else you want to tell the judge? Okay. So Judge, I'm going to remove my request for $2,500 bond. Obviously, he's got some children to take care of. Nobody wants to be in jail during the holidays. So I'm going to respectfully ask for the bond of 2500 To the extent that, this, that there was an issue with my client maybe possibly being a suspect with this other co-defendant, obviously the, the court would issue an order that he's to stay away from this co-defendant. Mr. Tozzi, do you have any questions or anything you want to, um, in terms of uh, what Mr. Hall has testified to? No, Your Honor. Okay. And I, I apologize. I skipped right over the prosecutor. <laughs> <laughs> My fault. Any uh, any other follow up, Ms. Tozzi? No, Your Honor. Okay. Now, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lewis, I appreciate your presentation. I understand the state's concern. We've got someone who is very young in age, but has already started racking up quite an arrest history, um, particularly with um, traffic offenses and felony offenses. Um, before he can even get a driving history established, well, he's already got a bunch of those in addition to the, um, the felony charges for both arrests. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set a bond. I'm going to set the bond at $5,000. There's going to be some special conditions, uh, one of which is he cannot have any contact with a co-defendant, uh, uh, Kim, Sello, Antoine. Now, I understand that I dismiss the charge now but uh, against Mr. Antoine, but the state can always indict. Um, so he needs to understand that for all intents and purposes, they're still co-defendants. Um, and so he needs to have no contact with Mr. Antoine. Um, additionally, um, he needs to uh, at least begin the process of working on his GED while he's out on bond. Um, that's something that just needs to be done. Um, and he's so close, if he, if he left school in the 11th grade, he's very close to, to getting it. And I think that that's going to perhaps help. So he needs to start that process um, and, and keep that underway while he's out on bond. Yes, Judge. All right. Okay. And I'm sure yes, you sir, yes, sir. And I'm sure you are explaining to your client that um, you know the state's still investigating, and obviously cell phones were collected, and search warrants may be issued at some point. So the charges could change but for now that's what he's charged with and that's what the bond is oh yeah oh yeah yeah i'm explaining i'll explain all that to him judge i'm sure you already have 
I'm going to send a special condition back. And Mr. Strawberry, you're free to go. Thank, thank you, Judge. Thank, thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you.